What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to your source for music, business, motivation, and support. It's your boy, Sir Love. This is another episode of Ask Sir Love or Ask Sir Love. There we go. Get the order correct. So uh, as you know, on the show, what we do is we sit down and I answer questions from people just like yourself. that have sit, submitted questions in. So let's take a look at the question for the day. Mr. Spain. Mr. Spain says, I'm a producer from Anchorage, Alaska, and I have a ton of music that I'm interested in in a sync license that I guess I'm interested in doing some type of licensing deal. He's asking me, what's the first step? And first off, thank you for submitting this question. Anybody else that wants to get their question answered, please pop your answers in, uh, put your questions in below. And also let's talk about some of the answers that we get in. Let me jump into this. So, um, I've done a lot of sync deals. If you follow me for a while, you know I've cre- you know that I've created opportunities for my audience uh, where I've helped people get on uh, sync deals. We've done deals with Viacom, Nickelodeon, with my Viacom, which is inclusive of Nickelodeon and Paramount and VH1 and all these different platforms and whatnot. BET, Tyler Perry, etc. MTV. Um, a lot of great TV show placements, a lot of great things. And so, yes, I know all about licensing. I can answer the question for you. So. Believe it or not, I'm actually in the process of writing a book about this, and so I'm going to answer it straight from some of the pages of the book, all right? Um, and believe it or not, the book is called, and these, these, this text is not supposed to be here, but The Six Steps to, where am I? Six Steps, yeah, slide it over, there we go, Six Steps to Licensing Your Music on TV and film. Now, let me go through it. Let me go through the six steps. We'll talk through it. I'm not going to go through the whole book right now, but I'm in the process of writing it. So the first one is build a strong online presence. All right. Believe it or not, believe it or not, one of the first things that I'm going to do when it's time to place your record or or anything of that nature is I'm going to try to find something about you. I'm going to try to find your baseline. I'm going to try to find some information. I want to see a hub. I want to see a catalog, a website with a catalog of your stuff. I want to know how to get in contact with you. I want to know who your PRO is, who you're registered with, a lot of stuff like that. So have the first step is making sure you have a strong online presence. The second step is you need to create music specifically for TV and film. I can't even speak to how many people are just randomly making music, don't know how to properly position it for film, don't know how to tag it, how to label it. That There's all sorts of things associated with making a product uh, viable for film, right? So you have to make sure that you're making music intentfully for film. You're thinking about scenes and music and emotion and how it makes you feel. You're not just creating your own records for you and just throwing them out into the market and hope that they stick, right? You got to be intentional about what you're doing. All right, next, sell yourself. Selling yourself. Selling yourself is a really big part of this thing. Um, There are so many different ways to do it. There are different catalog platforms and listing platforms and environments that you can go to and submit your records. But honestly, good old-fashioned, traditional selling yourself, whether it's networking um, publicly, like in 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 a conference or an event or something like that, or doing it online, for which in this book that I'm writing now that's not out because I'm still writing it, uh, I actually go through step by step the, the, the solicitous way of doing it that actually gets results. Like people that have actually gotten in contact with me or someone on my team or someone that I know that's involved in music supervision or any of the other roles that I have listed here, music supervisor, sound, uh, sound designers, uh, record, rec, uh, recorder mixers, sound, uh, sound assistants, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are methodologies that you can use to get these people excited about you and what you're doing and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You asked me for step one. I'm giving you a couple steps. Uh, Step four. Step four, network uh, with industry music professionals, right? Get out there at these conferences. Get to know get to know people. Talk to them. Um, I walk through. I'm walking through and writing this how to go about doing that. But overall, you want to be in spaces where you can meet people. You want to have human interactions, and you want to build natural relationships. So that when it's time to make those phone calls and you do your pitches and it's time to sell, it's a natural situation. You have to understand that when you're in sales, when you're in the space of sales, the person you're selling to knows that you're selling because they're buying and they're interested in what you have. And so the idea of ah, of soliciting music like oh, I want you to hear what I have it's it's not that apprehensive it's very much business and it's very much relationship it's very much a cool transaction so you want to make sure you know the lingo you know the right words to say you get around people you say the words you need to say all right next license your music right how do you actually do the licensing portion like what does it look like to actually cut the deal with someone the contracts the negotiations the various different types of agreements that you might actually be in um, how to think about different agreements and different contracts because there's different types of licenses I have a video 
on this platform. Go to search. You can find it. Uh, if you go over to YouTube and search my YouTube channel specifically, you can find videos where I broke down all the different types of music licenses that you might get involved in. So know your stuff. Know what you're talking about. Know that you're, what you're uh, negotiating. And next, be persistent. You got to be persistent because honestly... People don't necessarily, uh, what would I say? People don't necessarily think about you, right? If you're reaching out to me and I have an opportunity, and I put the opportunity online, I said, hey, there's an opportunity. I'm looking for music for this, that, and the third. I am not thinking about you when I'm not looking through records. I'm not thinking about you when you reach out to me and I got 50 other things that are going on. I'm like, ah, oh, crap, I got to do this. I'm thinking about you during a time period where I have the email box open and I'm going through records with either me, sometimes I'm sitting down with the supervisor and going through records. Normally, I've already gone through some records before I sit down with the supervisor, so we already know what we're looking at because otherwise, Wise, what will my value be to them, right? So there's all these different there's all these different components and aspects and things of that nature associated with the process. But in general, you have to be persistent because there's so many times that a person has reached out to me and I wanted to get back to them, but I forgot. I got stuff going on. I have a family. I have kids. You know, I have different businesses that I'm involved in. I have different opportunities I'm involved in. I have meetings I'm going into. I'm solving fires and different scenarios. I'm out the country. Whatever it is. I'm not thinking about you. But when you send a message, I go, oh, crap, oh, I got to hit him back. And there's nothing wrong with reminding a person multiple times to keep, you know, keep yourself in the top of their mind. So I didn't just answer your question with the first thing you need to do. I broke it down and answered the six. Now, to break this thing down more in depth, I mean, where am I at with this book? Where, where am I at right now? Uh, I think, let's see, format, tools, word count. Where at what? 21,000 words. 21,000 words. I don't know how many hours that would be of me talking, but uh, obviously I can't cover all of that in this video. I have no interest in covering everything that I'm detailing in this book in the video, but what I will tell you is that it's not done. I plan on getting it done within the next 30 days or so, uh, 30, 60 days, whatever. If you're watching this video past, what? February, March, April, past April 2023. Look down in the description. I'll probably have access where you can go and get this book because it should be done by then. Or in, while I'm in production of it, I'll release a snippet of it. You can sign up with a link. I'll make sure I remember. Put a link in it on the bottom of this video and you can download at least a snippet of the book for free. But I'm in the process of writing exactly the question that you're asking. I think it was uh, so fortuitous that you decided to ask that question and I figured it was a great time for me to just drop a little knowledge out there and let you know that I'm, I'm, I'm dropping a book on the subject. So if you're interested in licensing, it's an amazing industry to get into, amazing space to get into. And there's so many people just like you that could benefit tremendously. There's so much money. When you think about the market right now, how many streaming platforms are out there? How many videos, uh, not videos, how many movies, how many video games, how many television shows need music right now? The demand is ridiculous. And they're cutting checks and they're making opportunities. So I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little and a little bit about a lot. And I'm always trying to give you guys everything that I have right here on Phase 6. Please check out the links in the description. If you want to sit down and chat with me personally about this, you can do so. I have access to my calendar on there. Uh, if you want to do something more in depth with me, you can. I have access to that below too. And if you just want to pay your tuition and support your boy, go ahead and do that right there. Look at that cash app information. Look out for your guy. I don't know everything, but I know a lot about a little, a little bit about a lot. I'm trying to give you guys everything that I have right here on Phase 6. I appreciate you watching the content. Until next time.